Okay, if this is where we ended off last time. Now, I mean, this last activity, we're not going to do it here because it's basically this week's lab. But I showed you one way to do this, right? I showed you one way to build the car rental code. It is by no means the correct way. It is a way to do it. If you look at this code and you think to yourself, I, I think I would do it a little differently, then yeah, go for it. Maybe your way is better. Maybe it's not better, it's just different. Maybe it's a little worse, but whatever, functionally it's the same. Like you might, just give me a sec. You might look at this and be like, yeah, I don't like that. I just, I had a function call right in here. So what I'll do is I'll be like above 100. The function call. And then KMS above 100, there. I, I like that better, and maybe I think, you know, I still, I also don't even really need the average kilometers. Is that what you're going to tell me? You could have yelled that out. <laughs> you didn't think it was supposed to be on? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you just wanted to see how far I'd go, is that it? And then you spoiled the fun for everybody. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get it on. Because half the time, I don't even trust these projectors. All right, the center projector says it's on. Ah, oh, it's there. OK, good. All right. So like I was saying, here, I'll just undo. If you look at this code and you think, you know, you, you had your function call in that one line. Remember, I don't like when my, one, I want my one line of code to do like one thing. But when I have a function call in that line of code, line 27, I've got all this calculation and then I'm multiplying it by some function call. Because the function call is going to return a value. So it's valid code, it'll do the calculation. But now that line of code is doing a lot. It's doing the calculation and doing a function call. I don't like that. So. Maybe I should do it that way. Realistically, I'd probably do it that way if I were to write this again. And you know, after you write your code, it's always good to take a step back and do what we call like a refactor. You know, just because it's working, all right, now that you've got it working, can you clean it up a little bit? And that would be an example of something maybe I do for cleaning up. Another one, too, the average kilometers, I only need that value if it's rental code D. So I, I can move that. I'm going to move that. Into the if and now, now it's a little cleaner. And maybe I should make this age a constant, right? Because 25 seems like an arbitrary value. Maybe there's a reason it's 25, right? Maybe if you go to the rental companies and you say, why 25, right? I know I joke about it's the screw young people over age, right? But maybe there's a reason. Maybe they've got a very specific concrete reason and they can label that value with a constant and that's even better. So. The way to code this is, th there's an infinite number of ways to code this. Obviously, this code is some of the most complex code we've written so far, but it's not crazy complex, so, like in the grand scheme of things. And even now, we can start to see the several different ways we could implement this. Even slight variations are easy to come, with, come by. In the lab this week, it's about doing this, and the point is to do it without looking at what I did, but to do it and just come up with your own solution, and it'll work, and you'll see how different it is. There's no right way. There's a lot of wrong ways, fine. But if you coded it a little differently and it does the job and it's, you know, it's good code, fantastic. Well done. Good job. This is, what I'm showing you here is by no means to suggest that this is the right way to do it. No, not at all. It's just a way to do it that is correct. Questions about that? Cool. All right, now to actually go to the loops. 
All right, so we learned about if else. <coughs> and if else is a great way, if I have a chunk of code that I want to run under some condition, right? Conditionals. So I've got some code that, you know, it allows me to make a decision. But with an if statement, that chunk of code will only run once if the condition's true, which is ideal in a lot of cases. But sometimes it's not. So first and foremost, I want to be very clear. Have a look at this code. I'll give you 30 seconds. Have a look at this code. It's going to print out four different values. What are the four values that it's going to print out? Give yourself 30 seconds. Come up with an answer in your head. And then we'll go through it just to make sure everyone's on the same page. This should be easy at this point. <clears throat> All right, well, what, what's the first thing to get printed out? What do you see? Everybody yell it out on the count of three. One, two, three. All right. The next one, everyone on the count of three. One, two, three. Ooh, who said six? Someone over there said six. People said six. Why did you say six? Just look too quickly. Yeah, that's probably it. I was trying to trick you on that one. So I got, you. I got a couple of you. So why is it five? Well, it was B is six. I printed out A. Who cares what B is? All right, so the second value to be printed out is five. The third value to be printed out is, on the count of three, one, two, three. There you go. And then finally, the last value to be printed out, one, two, three. Look at that, four. Why four? Well, on line 10, I obliterated whatever was an A, put three in there. Then I said A equals A plus one. Well, A was three, add one, it's four. Put it back into A, print out A. There, that's it. And this is all to just emphasize, I can reuse variables however long I want. I can keep doing this forever. And I know we looked at this in the previous topic, but this code here at the top of the screen and at the bottom of the screen is functionally e equivalent. The first one says a equals a plus 1. So take the value of a, add 1 to it, and put it back into a. The, the one on the bottom is a shorthand that means the same thing. It means, this means a equals a plus 1. That's all. It's a shorthand for it. You could also do minus equals, times equals, etc. If you like the shorthand, use it. If you hate it, you don't like it, don't use it. It doesn't matter. Do what you want. Now, like I said, the ifs will run a chunk of code. The chunk of code is the stuff in the if statement, like in that block, the indented code under the if. If I wanted to run code multiple times, like if I wanted to print hello world five times, well, here's how I'm going to want to do it. All right, if I want to print this five times, OK. Oops. Give it a second while it connects. There. Right? If I want to do it 10 times, no big deal. Right? Kind of annoying. Copy, paste, copy, paste, whatever. But I can do that. The problem with this is, yeah, it's kind of annoying. It doesn't scale well. If the next time I said do it a million times, you're going, oh. All right, that's kind of annoying. You can do it. It's still going to be annoying. It's prone to errors. Like, I know I was doing copying and pasting, but if I started writing out code I wanted to do multiple times, several times, you know, I might make a typo, I might make an error. So it's more prone to errors. It's harder to maintain. And, you know, what if, what if I want to... <laughs> Every time I determined how many times I want the number, 
or how many times I wanted print to be printed out, sorry, every time I wanted the, the hi to be printed out, I determined the number of times before runtime. I had to go in and co hard code, okay, I pasted it five times, I pasted it ten times, right? There's no way to determine the number of times I printed out at runtime. So for example, what if I wanted to ask someone for input? How many times do you want to print out high? It tells you and then, okay, print that number out. I can't do that with this strategy. So this is where loops come in. A loop really is just an if statement that's going to repeatedly run until the condition is not true. It'll repeatedly run while the condition is true. So here's an example of a loop. This is what we call a while loop. Now, having never seen this code before, I'm not going to hit run. Having never seen this code before, maybe some of you have, but if you've never seen this code, take a moment, look at this code, and I'm willing to bet figure out what it does. So I'll give you 30 seconds, look at the code, and think about what you expect to see in the end. <clears throat> Let's start by going through the code. Line one, counter equals zero. All right, so I've got a variable called counter. It's got zero in it. And then I say while counter is less than 10. Is zero less than 10? True. All right, so we execute the code in the loop. Print out counter, what's get printed out? Zero. And then I say counter plus equals one. So what value does counter have now? One. I go back to the start of the loop and I ask that question again. I check the condition. Counter is one now. Is one less than 10? True. Do it again. Print out one, add one to counter. It's two, is two less than 10? Yeah. Print it out, add one to counter. Eventually it'll get to eight. Is eight less than 10? Yeah, print it out, add one. It's now nine. Is nine less than 10? Yeah, print out nine, add one to counter. Counter is 10. Is 10 less than 10? False. So what gets printed out? What are the numbers that gets printed out? Zero to nine. We don't print out 10. But what value does counter have at the end? 10. And we could check that. So we see 0 through 9, and then this print on line 6. Here, let me make it there. Why was counter 10? Well, when counter was 9, 9 is less than 10, true, we print out 9, we added 1 to counter still. Counter became 10, the condition was not true anymore, we skip down to immediately after the loop and carry on there. And that's why we see the dashes and then the 10 printed out there. But counter did become 10, we just never printed it out. What do you think would happen if I put that here? This isn't a trick question. What does the code say? What values would you see printed out? 1 to 10. Why? It starts counter at 0, true, immediately add 1, then print it out. So eventually, we, we start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Eventually, we get to 8. 8's less than 10. Add 1, it's 9. Print out 9. Is 9 less than 10? Yep, add 1, counter becomes 10, print out counter, it's 10. So if we run that, and notice that counter at the end is still 10, because we, we never modified counter after the previous time it was printed out, where before we did. Now, let's get rid of this down here. One interesting thing I want you to observe is, how many numbers were printed out? 
10. We count 0. 0 is a number. We count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's a total of 10 values that were printed out. Remember that. Programmers love to start counting at 0, as an FYI. Just, I hate to, hate to tell you. Get used to it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just like the if, the while really doesn't care what the condition is. All the while cares about is what is the Boolean value the condition uh, evaluates to. There's a Boolean condition, there's a big condition, a big expression, that's going to get evaluated to either true or false. That's what the while cares about. When the thing evaluates to true, it sees the true, it runs. So here's a quiz for you. What's this going to do when I hit run? R raise your hand when you have an idea. You don't have to be even that confident, but what do you think? Raise your hand if you have an idea. Is this what you were thinking? The while will run whatever the condition, whenever it sees a Boolean that is true. So, counter is zero, while true, that's true. Run the code, print out counter, add one. Is true true? Yeah. Run it again, run it again. The value true will always be true. Therefore, this loop will run forever. This is an infinite loop. I stopped it if it wasn't obvious. <clears throat> what would happen if I didn't do this? Take a moment, look at this code. There's no trick here. What does the code say? Yeah, it's just going to print zero forever. Why? What does the code say? Counter is zero. Is zero less than 10? True. Print out zero. Is zero less than 10? Yeah. Print out zero. Is zero less than 10? Yeah. Print out zero. And this will just print out zero forever. Because that condition will never not be true. Zero, as far as I'm concerned, will probably always be less than zero. Less than 10. So you got to be careful with loops, because you can run into issues like this. Any questions so far, though? Yeah. So you set a condition after, so it's like while counter is less than 10, but maybe if is equal to 7, then it ends? Or? Yes, you can. Now, I don't actually talk about this. And there's some p programmers would say uh, this, this is kind of bad style. Um, but you can say if counter equals 7, for whatever reason, this is kind of a silly contrived example, but I'm going to show you anyways. You can use this word called break, which means break out of the loop. We don't typically, people will say, there's a lot of programmers that will say avoid using breaks, because you can always rewrite your code in such a way that it doesn't need a break. But Oh, and wait, I never actually. <laughs> there. Right? Cool. You can do that. But you can always say and counter is not equal to 7. It does the same thing. But you could have a condition to make it stop whenever you want like that, if you really wanted to. There's also another word that's called continue, uh, which means stop the current execution of the loop, but go back to the top of the loop and start again. 
it does have its uses, but again, there's a lot of programmers that say, eh, don't do that. You should rewrite your code in a way where it doesn't do that. It's not bad. It's just some people say it's bad. Kind of to each their own. It's a design decision. Just like the if, this is a Boolean expression that's, this is an expression that's going to evaluate to a Boolean if it's correct syntax. All the while cares about is I run if that evaluates to true. If I see a true, I run. If I don't see true, I don't run. That's it. So it's not the condition that matters, it's what it evaluates to that matters, just like the if. You might be thinking to yourself, well, you're kind of saying the same thing because the condition does evaluate to. You're right, but a lot of people get, they, they, they kind of forget that the condition evaluates to a Boolean and they think that it, like the if actually cares about the condition itself, which I suppose it ultimately does, and maybe I'm splitting hairs on some minor nuance, but I don't know, I think it's important to, to note. By the way, has anyone watching these videos, these older videos? So if you have, a warning, if it's not already obvious, and I believe I put notes in the comments in some of these older videos, <coughs> Those older videos are using Python 2. So in this particular example, you see the, the print. It doesn't have parentheses. In Python 2, that's the syntax. You don't put parentheses by your print. In Python 2, you could put the parentheses there, just ignores them. In Python 3, you have to have the parentheses. Because print changed to a function, there's a reason for that. But that's the big core main difference you would probably notice if watching those videos. Now, here's some code. I want you to take a moment. I want you to take, I'm going to give you like three minutes. Trace through that code by hand. You're probably, if you've got your computer, maybe open up like a notepad. If you have scrap paper, you might want to note it there because Notice that there's two values changing here. Notice that the value of result changes and the value of n changes. So now there's two variables that are changing as this executes. So it's going to be a little harder to just keep track of in your head. So follow through this code and try to figure out what it's doing. Try running it with a couple examples. I say, you know, you can run it with four. What would happen if you ran it with five? What happens if you run it with three? Try to figure out what, what function this code actually has.
Anyone have a sense of what it's doing? No, not quite. Think about how the input to the function, the arguments, and what's returned relate to one another. It's a tricky one. I love how this is still here. I wrote that like weeks ago, right? <laughs> oh, you can't even see. Here, let's just think of tracing it through. <clears throat> let's say I start here. I'm going to have like n and then result, right? Can you see that reasonably well at the back? All right, if you can't, sit closer next time. There's a lot of seats. So what happens? Let's say I give it 4. So n is 4. So what does the code say? Well, result is 1, all right. Uh, while n is greater than 1, while 4 is greater than 1, result equals result times n. So result is 1, n is 4, so result is now 4. Result changes to 4. Great. We reduce n to become 3, all right. Now we go back up to the top, 3 is greater than 1. So obviously we can see this loop is counting down, not up, which is fine. All that matters is that's a, that it's a condition. And then result changes from 4 to what happens? Well, result is 4 times n, 4 times 3, that's 12. 2. Results will be result times n, n is 2, that's 24. n becomes 1. 1 is not greater than 1, so it stops. <clears throat> there. So when I give it 4, I get back 24. Who here got that? No one? Two people? All right, good. Two people. Anyone know what the relationship between 4 and 24 is? It's factorial. Who remembers what factorial is? All it is is a fancy way to say 4 factorial is the same thing as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? So 4 factorial, you write it with an exclamation point is equivalent to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? That's what factorial means, and that's what this function is doing. Now, if I were to write, rewrite this code, I'd probably clean it up a bit. I think this is written in a way where it's a little less obvious. It's not very self-descriptive, that's for sure. An interesting thing about factorial, though, is Based on what you know of 4 factorial, what's 5 factorial? Yeah, you're, you're working too hard. I don't want, I don't want to, it, yeah, it's 120, but it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
Does anyone notice anything interesting though? About like what, what we see, four factorial and five factorial here? Here's what I see. What's this right here? That's four factorial. So five factorial is equal to five times four factorial. Pretty cool, right? In fact, here's a, here's a fun little thing, and this is going to come up a little later in the semester. Here's a cool little thing. What's one factorial? It's just one, right? So if I ever told you, if I ever asked what one factorial was, it's just one. Now, what is n factorial? Some arbitrary value n. What's n factorial? Say that again, but louder. n factorial is equal to, I'm, I don't really have a lot of space here. I'm going to erase this just to make a little bit more space. Here, let's, let's do it in a few more steps, right? So n factorial is obviously going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times times 1, right? Eventually. You're going to go all that way down. But what is all this? Well, like you just said, well, that's, all, that's n times n minus 1 factorial. With this definition, you could tell me what the factorial of any, any value is. It's pretty neat. I ask you what 5 factorial is, you go, well, it's just 5 times 4 factorial. And then you go, okay, well, what's 4 factorial? Well, that's easy. That's just 4 times 3 factorial. And then you go, okay, but then what's 3 factorial? Well, that's, well, that's really easy. That's 3 times 2 factorial. Okay, what's 2 factorial? Like, I'm answering a question with another question, right? That's kind of annoying. So what's 2 factorial? Well, that's easy. That's just 2 times 1 factorial. So that begs the question, what's 1 factorial? I know the answer to that. It's 1. So if I know 1 factorial is 1, what's 2 factorial? Well, 2 factorial was 2 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1. So it's 2 times 1. Now I know what 2 factorial is, meaning I c now I can know what 3 factorial is, right? Because 3 factorial was 3 times whatever 2 factorial was. So we actually were, we asked a question, and we answered it by asking multiple more questions until we kind of got to a bottom where we actually had a concrete answer. And then we can work our way back up to answer every question, which is kind of neat. Anyone know what we call this? There's a very special word we use to, to, to describe this phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but we could get a little bit more specific. <laughs> it's called recursion. It's, this is a recursive definition. When something is defined in terms of itself. I defined n factorial with the, I defined factorial with the definition of factorial, which is kind of weird, but it, totally it's fine. Anyways. <clears throat> so here's an activity. Write a function called int sum that takes a single integer n and returns the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n inclusively, meaning if I give you 5, I want 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, like include the 5. Write that function.
Here's my solution, and we're going to pick up here on, when do we have class next, Tuesday, Monday, Monday I think? Whenever we have next class, all right, then whenever we have class next, whatever it is, we'll pick up here. And a lot of people actually struggle this one because they forget that when you're the programmer, you're God. People forget like, whoa, oh, I... I I can have another counter. I can have another variable to keep track of the running total. Yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want. You're God. If you want a variable to keep track of some useless value, you can do it. I don't care. Do whatever you got to do to make it work. But the last thing I want to end with here is with the while loop, All that matters is that it's a condition. The while loop doesn't, a counter is, I used a counter to create a condition because I wanted to count. Here, I want it to keep asking for input until I say the right thing. There, it finally stopped. All that matters is that it's a Boolean condition. The counter is not a necessity, it's just a Boolean condition. Anyways, we'll wrap up here.